Hello, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the... Ah. Hello, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from using the old Unity input system to using the brand new one and have it enable split screen kind of automatically. It's extremely simple. And by the end of this, you should have no reason to be using the old input system at all. So let's get started with a quick sample. Here I've got a character that can move left and right and jump up and down. He's got a slow walk animation and a backwards walk animation that I didn't make play backwards, but I can jump walk back and forth, and that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the code. I'm gonna stop playing, we'll open up the player script, and here you can see that I'm using the old input system. In the update method, we read the horizontal value by reading the input.getAxis horizontal value. This is using, again, that old input system where these values are predetermined for us and kind of hard-coded, although we can adjust them. I also check to see if they've jumped, and then on line 20, if they've jumped, we set our velocity to go up upward in the jump velocity, and we use our horizontal regardless of whether we've jumped. So the frame that we jump, we go up, otherwise we just continue to use our rigid body velocity, and then we update the animator so that we get that cool little animation or switch back and forth to idle. So how do we switch over to the new input system? Isn't it difficult and hard? Well, nope, it's actually very simple. All we need to do is go to the window and package manager setup, or I guess technically go to window and then package manager, get the package manager window, go to packages and choose Unity Registry. We'll scroll right down here until we find the input system. And you can see it's 1.4.4 right now. This will probably update constantly. They've been getting relatively regular updates. We'll install it though, and it should pop up in just a moment. And it's going to probably ask me if I want to restart my Unity editor. Now, most of the time this just works and it just updates and reloads, but I have noticed that sometimes my editor just randomly crashes when it does the restart. And I think it's just something to do with the packages and the version of Unity that I'm on. This time it looks like the restart went perfect though and I've got my editor back up and running. So I'm gonna close the package manager window and go select my player. But before we go any further, this video is sponsored by Unity and they just released an awesome new ebook on UI design and implementation. It includes step-by-step -step guidance on everything you need to know about building a UI in Unity using both Unity UI and UI Toolkit. It features tons of important topics and some great tips and tricks that'll help you improve your game's UI. The user interface is an extremely important part of your game and when it's done correctly, it's a great way to communicate with and guide your player. The ebook is completely free, so I definitely recommend you go download it right now and you can do so by clicking the link in the description. What we need to do to use the new input system is add the player input module. I've got the word player already typed in here. So you can see we've got player input and player input manager. We're gonna start with the player input and then we'll talk about the manager in just a moment. We add the player input and the first thing you're gonna wanna do is create some new actions. You notice that it has a field here for input action asset. That's where we can define or assign the defined actions for our inputs that are gonna map to this character. For most games, we're probably just gonna have one of those though, and we can create the initial one by hitting the Create Actions button. It'll give us a nice dialog to, to ask us where we wanna create these actions. Mine's named New Input because that's just the name of this project for the video, but yours will probably be whatever your game name is. I'll save it in the root for now, and then this should pop up and open the New Input Actions uh, dialog control. This allows us to modify and create new actions that we want to bind up to stuff. You can see that I've got move in here and it's bound to the left stick on a gamepad, WASD, our primary axis on XR controller and the stick. And you can see that fire is bound to, is that right trigger? And I believe left mouse and, and everything. And then look is the right stick or the mouse delta. That's this pointer right here. So we're going to have our character use the move and a jump one. Well, we'll start with fire and then we'll add a jump. So how are we gonna do that? The first thing we need to do is open up our player and get a reference to the player input. So I'm gonna add a serialized field for our player input and we'll just grab that in on validate. Let's we'll say underscore player input equals get component and give it the type of player input. This will allow us to reference the input on this specific character. We'll generate a field for it, and I've got to make it a serialized field because I'm filling it out in on validate. If I was doing it in a wake, it wouldn't necessarily need to be one. Now, instead of reading input.getAxis, we're going to read player input.actions, and we're going to read the move action. 
We want to get back a value from it. So we want to read the current value of the move action. We can do that with the read value method. And then that takes a type. So we'll give it the type that move takes or move uses. And a move, since it's a horizontal and a vertical, we've got an X and a Y. It's actually a vector two. So we're going to put vector two right there. And then we need our open close parentheses. Now, if I just add a semicolon, I'll have a problem because horizontal is a float. So I really just want to read the X. I don't care about the up and down. We'll add a dot X here. Now we'll do the same for jump or well, slightly close to the same. We're going to replace the input get button down with player input dot actions. And we'll start with the fire action and we'll add a closing quotes and brace or closing square bracket. And we'll check the was performed this frame. There we go. So we can check to see if they pressed or performed the jump action. Actually, I think we want was pressed this frame. There, that not was performed. That because that would count the release. So we want to know if they pushed down on the button this frame. We'll save real quick and we should now have access to in a working version with the new UI system. Let's try it or not UI, new input system. Let's try it out. So I run around, let's hit play. I should be able to move and jump with my WASD and my left click still. Let's see if that's the case. Look at that. I'm moving, I'm jumping, and now I can even grab my controller and jump in here. And remember, it was right trigger that was bound to jump. So I don't want right trigger to be bound. I want my cross or X button in here to be the one that I'm using instead. So I'm going to stop playing, and we're going to modify the action map a little bit. To do that, I'm going to double click the actions, and we'll go down to the action section. So I double click the action map here in the, or the actions field and that popped up this input actions editor. We're gonna hit the plus, and we're gonna create a jump action. I'm gonna create a new binding. Well, first we'll select this blank binding that it got, gave us automatically, and I'm gonna search for the space key. I want my space button on my keyboard to be jump, and then we're gonna add another binding. To do that, we'll hit the plus here on the jump, and hit add binding, just this top one, and we're going to add a binding to the cross button. So I'm gonna search for PlayStation, and here you can see I've got circle, cross, D-pad, and all those. I'll go with the cross button, and then we'll hit the save asset button. I'll close this window out, press play, and now I should be able to jump with space or this cross slash X. Let's see. Oh, and I can't. The reason that I can't is because we didn't update the code. So if I go into the code, update the fire code to say jump, and use that jump action, now we'll actually be able to use the new action that we just set up. Important that you actually reference that action. So let's press play. Let's run around and jump again. There we go. Now I can jump with the X button or with space. Obviously, it's not a complete full jump system, but hopefully you're starting to get the idea and you can extend upon this. So how do we go into full multiplayer with split screen. I mentioned at the beginning that it's really easy to go from this to full split screen. So let me show you the process. The first thing that we need to do is make the camera be a child of the player. Now, there are some ways around this, but the, the core easiest thing we can do is take the camera, make it be a child directly of the player, and then go select the player, and we need to assign this camera field. So we'll take the camera and drag it in as the assigned camera. So the main camera is now a child of the plant, and I might want to do some adjustment now, because if I press play and I run around, I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna be on the screen. Let's see. There you can see it's a little bit high. I think that what I'd like to do is move the camera up just a little bit so that it's at maybe like a 3 or a 3.5. Let's go with like a value of about 3. So I'll stop playing. We'll put in a 3 there. And then we need to make sure that this plant player is turned into a prefab. Right now it is a prefab, but it's a prefab of just the art stuff. So we're going to turn it into a completely new prefab. I'm going to right click choose prefab and hit unpack completely just to make sure that this is not a prefab at all. So we've got the player here. We'll take it in, drag it right into my root for now. I'm not gonna use the prefabs folder because it has some other stuff that is just gonna confuse you and not, make, not be useful. So I've got my plant player as a prefab. And the final thing I need to do is go to game object, create an empty game object, and let's add the player input manager script to it. I'll reset the transform just because I like to do that and give it the name of player input manager so it's easier for me to find. Now the reason we needed a player prefab is because it needs to be assigned right here. So we'll take the plant player, drag it into that player prefab, and then take a look at our options here. We've got a join behavior that will 
join when a button is pressed. So what this means is that whenever we press a button on a new controller, new input device, it's going to join a new player on that device. Now there's another option for join when an action is triggered. So that's if you want to assign a specific button, like maybe the start button or hit X to enter or whatever, you can assign it and directly link it to that action. Or there's an option to just join manually where you control that through your own code. So let's save our scene. I'll press play and watch what happens if I hit the button on my controller. You'll see that I should get a second player there. So now I've got two players showing up, um, but the screen's not split and the camera is only showing whatever my most recent player is. If I didn't make the camera a child, by the way, I could do my split screen and have it kind of follow both of the players on there or follow both the players at the same time. But since I wanted to do split screen, we needed that camera as a child. So we can go check this box, hit enable split screen, save and press play, and now watch what happens. We're actually gonna get two characters side by side with a nice split screen view. So now I've got both of my characters walking around. They've got their own view. They've got their own controls. And uh, well, I'm pretty impressed with just how easy this is. Now there's a lot more to this new input system. There are ways to read the inputs outside of reading and pulling each action. You can get events back from both the player input manager when somebody joins, somebody leaves, or from the player itself when anything happens. If we go over to the behavior here, you'll see that send messages is on, and it's actually sending a message to this object when any of these things happen. So we're not reading those messages, it's using that Unity send message where we just create a message. But you can also change this to be broadcast so that it sends to everything. You probably don't want that though. Or invoke Unity events where we can have a callback on any of these things. So look could have a callback or fire or jump or whatever. We could define those in here. Or finally, you can go with invoke C sharp events and then you can tie in and hook in with the code and actually fire off base or respond based on those. So lots of different options here. What we've gone with so far is polling because it's the simplest and ties kind of directly maps or maps directly back to what the old input system used. So I hope that this was helpful and I hope it's a good starting point for you. If you're curious about the new input system, I'd say go check it out or also check out some of my courses. I've got lots of stuff. We're diving into the new input system in upcoming and existing courses. And um, with that, that said, please hit the like, subscribe and share buttons. And if you have some thoughts about the input system or specific questions, drop those in comments as well. I really appreciate them. And kind of curious to know what it is you're using it for or what kind of problems or issues you're running into or just questions that you might have or random thoughts. Also, don't forget to download Unity's new ebook on UI design and implementation. It's full of great tips and tricks to help you improve your game's UI and it's completely free. I recommend you click the link in the description and go grab it right now.